Okay, now we're ready to start writing VBA code. And when you write VBA code, you're going to be writing three types of code. The first type is a subprocedure, which is more commonly called a macro. The second type is a function. And the third type is a class. And we're going to start out with subprocedures. Subprocedures are co is, is code that just does something. And when I say does something, I mean it performs some action. So you could have a subprocedure that displays a message box. That's what we're going to do first here. Um, and let's talk about how you write a subprocedure. So to write a subprocedure, or what's more commonly called a macro, you just put the word sub, and then you put the name of your macro. So I put the word sub here. Now I'm going to put the name of my macro, which will be called my first macro. And then you could just hit enter and notice what happens. These parentheses pop up and then a line pops up that says n sub. So automatically, as soon as you hit enter after the name you put in, um, <coughs> VBA completes the framework for you. So this is, this is the container for your macro. You need to have this. You need to have a line that says sub and then the name of your macro and then parentheses and then you need to have a line that says n sub below that. And in between, you're going to write your code. So that's pretty simple. Now let's write some code. And initially, all we're going to write is a message box. We're going to write some code that has a message box pop up. So to do that, it's real easy. You just put msg box. And then you could put what you want the message box to say. So I'm going to say hello. So this is our first macro right here. And notice that um, a few things. There's blue coloring for these words here, sub and n sub. And that means that these are keywords in VBA. And you'll come across a lot of keywords, and we'll see them later on. But it's something to note that when a word has a different color and it's blue, it means it's a keyword. And you can't you can't use those words. Those are reserved words only for VBA. So don't try to name a variable that. Don't try to name your macro sub. If you do this, sub sub, you get an error here. Because you can't use keywords as the name of things, as the name of a variable or the name of your macro. So that's something to be aware of. Another thing to note is that here I wrote some code and notice that it's in black. But what if you want to add comments to your macro? Well, to add a comment, you just put the apostrophe, and then you put a comment, like this is my first macro. This is my first macro. So here we have um, our macro, and here's a comment. So you can write comments in your code. You can't do multi-line comments, but you could you know, write some more comments down here. And notice that the comments are in green. So you need to have the apostrophe, and once you put the apostrophe, they appear in green. If I don't put the apostrophe, I get an error because it doesn't know what this line means. It doesn't. It's not. Um, it's not a function. It's not a reserved word, and it doesn't make any sense to VBA. So you need to have um, an apostrophe, and that'll allow you to put comments in your code. What does this line do? So this line here is the actual real meat of our program. Even though it's a small program, this is the line that displays the message box. And how are we doing that? We're doing it with a built-in function um, <coughs> or a, a built-in subprocedure that, that displays whatever you put in the parentheses. So we'll get into exactly what the built-in functions do and all that but all you need to know now is that if you put message box and then parentheses and then something in between in double quotations when you run this a message box is going to show up so now let's run this macro and to run a macro you can <coughs> do it a, a lot of, a, a few different ways the first way to do it 
is to just put your cursor inside the sub procedure and hit this run button up here. This run button is on the standard toolbar. So this is a standard toolbar. If I put my cursor here and I just click run, then watch what happens. You get a message box that pops up and it says hello. That's what this line of code did. Another way you can run your macro is to simply uh, press F5. So if I put my macro, if I put my cursor in here and I <coughs> and I press F5, I get the same message box. So so there's two ways of doing it. One way is to use the run button. The other way, <coughs> notice the other way in in that pop-up box it says F5 there. So you could put your cursor here and press the run button or you could put your cursor here and press F5. Another way to do it, another way to run your macro <coughs> is to create another macro like sub my second macro. And I just hit enter again and there's a parentheses and there's the end sub. And you could use a keyword called call and you could call this macro. So if you put the word call and then the name of a macro, I'm going to put the name of this macro down here. So here's my first macro. What this does runs. So this is going to run the macro by using the call keyword. And if I run this sub procedure by just putting my print, uh, cursor in here and pressing the run button, what happens is this sub procedure is calling this sub procedure. So there you see three different ways of running a macro. <laughs> and there you see what a macro is. It's just code that does something. In our case, it's code that displays a message box. So that's it for this video. I know this is very basic, but what we went over is very important. We learned how the syntax that's required to write a macro. You need the word sub, which stands for sub procedure. You need the name of a macro that you can decide. Um, notice that the name of your macro can't begin with the word can't begin with a number. Um, that's one thing to note. And it can't have spaces in it, so you can't do that either. Um, notice that, you, like we said before, you can't name your key. You can't name your macro a keyword <coughs> because you get an error there. So there's a couple different things. But for the most part, if you just write letters. Uh, you'll be fine. So we learned a lot in this video. The syntax we need to write a macro, the, 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 sub, keyword, the sub keyword, the name, the parentheses are necessary. And for instance, if you want to see why, if you don't put that, it automatically puts them. So you can't really get rid of them. Uh, we learned how to put comments in a macro we learned how to <clears throat> write a little bit of code that calls a message box and we learned about this end sub line that is required if you don't put this um, and you try to run this you're gonna get an error because it says the sub or function is not defined what is it referring to it's saying this this function right here my first macro is not defined because it doesn't have the end sub keyword or the end sub key phrase, I guess you want to call it. Now that it's defined, you can run it. <clears throat> so all this stuff is required. Um, this line and this line, these are required things. We learned about comments, we learned about some code, and then we learned how to run the macro using the run button or clicking F5, but your cursor has to be inside the macro, or you could use the call keyword. So in the next video, we're going to talk about variables, and that'll... 
that'll open things up to us.